Okay guys, today we're gonna to be working on Worthy Wise. I'm gonna give you a close-up of this, and then I'm going to talk about the words individually. But before we do that, and then come down here for the last three, so you can kind of see them. Before we do that, I have some general announcements that need to be made. All right, the first announcement that needs to be made is that we need to be checking in to the portal every single day. This is how the district is going to take attendance. So when you log into your portal, you will be counted as in attendance in school that day. It doesn't mean you have to be logged into your portal from eight in the morning until three o'clock. That's not what it means. It means you need to be in it, log in for a while. I'm gonna say at least 10 minutes and log out. Now, if you're doing Edgenuity for any of your classes and you're going in through the portal, you don't have to do anything. All you do is go in, you do your edgenuity time, and you're good to go. All right, so don't panic. We're all good. Just make sure that you are logging in every single day. Um, we have another Zoom question and answer session tomorrow. When you look at your daily briefing, which is going to be online in a few minutes, or a couple of hours, you're gonna see, look here, that's the announcement I just made about logging into the portal. But you're going to see that there are three separate Zoom question and answer sessions. First block is at 10 a.m. Second block is at noon. And third block is at 1 p.m. When you received an email from Ms. Eckert, it might have said 10 a.m but if you went down to the bottom, it actually has the corrected times. So please make sure you actually um, refer to those corrected times. And if you look at your paper, it tells you your login information, as well as the passcode that you will need. Okay, so without further ado, Wordly Wise, um, we've got some good words this week. Uh, let's, so let's start from the top. Let me put my laptop away. Don't want to have that crashing onto the ground. All right, so um, guys, my first word is to anticipate. We understand the word anticipate because we anticipate holidays, we anticipate birthdays, we anticipate different things. Um, so if you look here, I did two little eyes as well as a clock, and that's just me anticipating like the end of the school day. Um, number... Hi. Oh. Hi. So I did not anticipate him walking in the door, so um, there is the... That's really odd that you would go. Sorry about that. It's all right. Um, <laughs> sorry guys, um, that threw me a little bit. Uh, okay, sorry, <laughs> I'm back. All right, the end, uh, we anticipate this end of this COVID so we can actually go back to class and go back to school. That would be great uh, because believe it or not, we miss you guys. Um, the second word is bankrupt. This is unable to pay one's debts. This is a big concern that we have right now going on with our global economy as we are in this social distancing and we're all remaining at home. There's a lot of people that can't work, which is gonna put uh, heavy strains on finances. So this is a word that may come into play. Now, my kiddos in here that love to watch The Office, you are going to remember an episode in which Michael Scott comes out and says, I declare bankruptcy. Okay, guys, it's really not that easy. You don't just get to make that statement and have it be a case. So if you are bankrupt, it means you don't have money to pay your debts um, or you're left without you know, value, things like that. The next word is brief. I am anything but brief. Brief means very short in duration. If you look at my graphic, I thought that was pretty good. I wrote not Miss Wood talking because I am not a brief speaker. Uh, in fact, this is my second time to do this video because the first time it was so long that I was like, okay, these kids don't want to watch a 36 minute video. So I had to do it again to make it briefer or more brief. All right, so uh, my image that I drew was the little dots going in a row to show short, succinct moments in time. The next word is brisk. Now there's two different definitions of brisk. There's brisk, like I'm walking briskly, like I'm, I'm moving quick, which is what I have here, two little runners, and they're moving very quickly. It also is like I put a jacket. And the reason I put a jacket is because in brisk weather, it would be cool and crisp, so you might wanna wear a jacket. So, a jacket. Budget. Ooh, I don't like this word. But I don't like this word because I don't like to be on a budget. That's my own personal issue though. 
Um, budget means how you plan out the use of your money. So what I drew here is like rent and phone, electricity, clothes. Um, I think it's really funny that I only budgeted $75 a month for clothes. Mm, yeah. I think I might go over $75 a week sometimes, but that's just my own uh, issue there. Uh, next word is the word compete. Compete is where we go against other people or other teams. If I am competing with someone, I am trying to be the absolute best. Uh, I'm trying to win. It is definitely a contest. You're also going to see that I only did first, second, and third place because not everyone is going to compete and win. Sometimes we compete and we get the thrill of the participation, but sometimes we compete and we actually win. Uh, the next word is the word complicate. Um, I tend to complicate things in my life by biting off more than I can chew, by taking on too many tasks. We can also have complicated situations. When we all had to dive in and start learning online, it was complicated for us. It was not an easy thing, at least not for people like me, you know, technologically challenged. Uh, I also drew a picture here of a puzzle with 5,000 pieces. That would be a complicated task for me. I don't have the attention span to do something that's 5,000 pieces, maybe 500 on a good day, but certainly not 5,000. Uh, it's something that's not easy. If something is complicated, it's difficult. So I drew the little anti-sign with the word easy on there. Um, effect. There's a difference, guys, between effect and affect. And I have an entire video on the daily briefing. If you'll look at that, it'll show you the difference between these two words. Basically, the one with an A is a verb in most situations. Just a very simplistic way of thinking about this. Effect is kind of dealing with the word result. The effect of taking the aspirin was my headache went away. The effect of putting gas in the car, you know, things like this. It shows a result was the car was able to drive. Air. My kids who are baseball fans are really going to know why I drew an E. Guys, if you are at a baseball game and you're at the Marlins and they really, really mess up, like they don't catch a ball that should have been something that an average five-year-old should have caught, they actually put a big E up on the scoreboard saying, this is an error. Man, this is a grievous error that you should never have done. So they like call them out. It's like, oh. Kind of, kind of like it actually. And I also put an X. So if we have an error, if you think about the word error, an error with an O-R at the end, if we make an error, we make a mistake. So I put an X to show that something might be wrong on um, maybe an assignment or something. Factor. Guys, we have different factors. Things that we could say, uh, many things factored into my decision to buy a new car. That means I had many variables that impacted my decision to buy a new car. Um, I also drew it out like a math problem. A plus B equals AB. This is basically saying that factors are individual parts of a whole. Uh, fad. Fad is something that comes in and out of popularity in a very brief amount of time. So one fad that we have is visco. Um, how many of you made the little sound? You know, okay. uh, or thought of a turtle, or the metal straw, or the scrunchie, or the hydro flask with the stickers, and all these things from our Visco girls. Uh, but this is a fad that comes in and out. Guys, this would be like the poodle skirts in the 1950s. This would be, um, oh gosh, I found some pictures of me in high school the other day. I should bring them in, guaranteed to make you laugh. But my hair was like this big. It was impressive. So that would have been a fad or a fashionable fad at the time. We used to wear these little jelly bracelets. That was a fad. We had jelly shoes, like these little jelly sandals. I know that was a fad when I was younger. So basically a fad is something that comes in and out of popularity rather quickly. Gripe. Gripe is like when you're, if you're griping about something, you're complaining. You're like, I don't like this. This is bothering me. Oh, I don't want to do this anymore. So that's a gripe. So some of you might be griping about edgenuity. Some of you might be griping about uh, your parents making you go outside and play instead of being able to be on your phones the whole time. 
So a gripe is something that you're complaining about. So I just did the word grr. Uh, a knack. Knack is something you're really good at. So I put a check mark. Uh, so if I have a knack for knitting, I know that we have a, an eighth grade, well, actually an algebra teacher upstairs who loves to knit and loves to cook. She has a knack for doing those things. I have a knack for talking. Yay! Okay, so that's what I'm good at. Uh, my family may disagree, but yeah, I'm good at it. Leisure. Leisure is something that you do during your off time. This is not your academic time. This is not your work time. This is something you would do for fun. Now, if you look, I drew biking, watching TV, and reading. These are all social distancing activities, so I thought I would keep with our uh, COVID virus time frame and make sure to do leisure activities that were actually representative of something you could really do right now. So going to a party would not be something we would want to do right now because it kind of breaks that social distancing rule. Uh, however, it is something you could do once all this is over. And the last word we have is the word unique. Unique means one of a kind. So you can't really say that my dog is the most unique dog because now I'm comparing him to other dogs. You would just say, my dog is unique. That means Barkley is one, he looked over here, he said, oh, you said my name. Uh, Barkley is one of a kind. Each one of you are one of a kind. Each one of you are unique in your own way. So these are our words. When you go into the lesson today, there are the four parts that we're going to do. The first portion is where I ask you to look at the four sentences, and you're going to look at the sentence, read it, the word in context. If the word is used correctly, you place a C on the blank. If it's incorrect, you place an I on the blank. And you'll do this for all of part A. Part B, you'll read the sentence, and if it applies to that scenario, go ahead and circle or highlight it. So for example, which word or words go with the word money? And if you look, you have the word bankrupt. I can't read these upside down. Uh, you have <laughs> the word motion, budget, and fad. So by looking at that, I'm gonna say that budget and bankrupt would deal with money. So again, complete this section. On section C, you're doing sentence completion. Actually, C and D are both sentence completion. On C, you're actually completing the sentence based on the options that are given. Now, this definitely could be more than one answer. So you might have one answer, then you might have two, you might have three selected, you might even have all four. On part D, you are actually completing the sentence. Allow your own personality to come through here. Try to look up the words if you don't know how to spell them and do the best that you can. Later on, I believe it's next week, we're going to be doing E and we will post more about that at that time. Now for social studies, we are going to be talking about some of the difficulties that arose once we divided into two political parties. If you will recall the one thing, the two pieces of advice that George Washington gave us as he exited his second term of being president, he said, one, don't get divided into political parties, and two, don't get involved in foreign affairs. Well, it did not take long for us to do both of those things. In fact, at the onset of President Adams's term, we were not only divided into two political parties, but we were also very heavily involved in foreign affairs. So as you go through this lesson, there are two links at the bottom. I can sit here and I can explain this to you, and I did in the first video, and I realized it took me 20 minutes to explain this. Or you can watch 11 minutes of two YouTube videos that are much more brief in nature and aren't quite as complicated and get the effect that we need. Okay, so go down on the bottom, watch those two videos. You don't have to watch all of them. I tell you where you can stop. One of them is at five minutes and the other is like six minutes and 20 seconds. But they're really good at explaining not only what John Jay's treaty was, Jay's treaty, but also the information that is uh, being offered to you in this lesson. All right, so that's it for today. 
Hopefully it's a lot shorter than my first 32 minute video. And I hope you guys are staying safe, washing your hands, eating healthy. Try not to argue with your siblings if you have siblings and you know, get outside and ride that bike. Do some of the good leisure activities that involve some physical activity as well. All right, we miss you and we hope to see you in May. Here's your words again and your little pictures. All right, guys.